Joining us now, it's the seniors, uh, two of the leaders of the UCF 2022 team. Team 21, as Coach Bear likes to say. Speak of senior pitcher Gianna Macha and a senior outfielder Denali Schapacher. Ladies, welcome. Uh, good to, to talk to you once again. You too. Yeah, good Good talking to you always, Eric. <laughs> well, let, let's, let me ask you both, start with this, and I'll start with you, Gianna, of this. You both obviously uh, – you know, decided to come back. You had an extra year. You could have done a lot of different options here. Just take me through that decision of coming back here to UCF and uh, starting with Juji. Um, I think, I mean, at least for me, um, I, you know, prided myself on, um, you know, finishing at least my career on a high note. And like, you know, I think Aaliyah White helped me like understand that, you know, I get to come back and you know, continue what, you know, she's brought to this program and what other um, athletes have brought to this program. And so I think it was just another opportunity for me to, you know, showcase that um, obviously for them and, you know, to keep this program running for future generations. Denali, what about you? Yeah, um, I think with both of us, we both just kind of had unfinished business. Um, you know, she, we both were on the team when, when COVID hit and everything. And um, obviously we got to play and everything and had a pretty good run last year, but, um, now that everything's just a little bit easier to go through, I think we both wanted to, yeah, end on a high note, um, had some goals that we had set that I think we're both still striving to get. So, um, it was an easy choice. I think for both of us last year, the team made their NCAA tournament first time since 2016. What was the experience like starting with you, Denali, since it was your first time in the NCAA? What what do you take from that experience, you think, from the returners that will benefit them this year? Yeah, um, it was really – how do I say this? Um, and I just got, like, a taste of, like, how competitive – you know, every like softball can be. I mean, obviously, you know, you wa I've watched it every year that it's been on, unfortunately, from the couch, not actually playing it. Um, so just seeing that and like feeling the atmosphere and, you know, we did beat Auburn. We played head to head with FSU um, who ended up getting second. So um, playing that and realizing like how competitive we are and like the best team can go out there and, and, and win a game and win a championship. So having that feeling, I think will be really, important to kind of share with the the new girls that haven't been able to experience it yet for you g that was like regular you know old hat for you it's, you've been to the regionals before when prior with boise state with coach bear and obviously at uh, seattle in the regionals there you've been at a gainesville regional in 2019 what was it like to be back in the regional last year in tallahassee what what did you take from that experience um i think you know out of the three times that I've gone to a regional um, that time and not taking away from any of the teams that I've been with, um, I felt the most confident in our team being there and our experience, like whether or not we had been there before or not, it felt like we had, like we prepared and like had the confidence we needed to have going into it. And like Denali said, like we were head to head with FSU and they were runner up in the World Series. So, I mean, um, taking that and using that as like our fuel to what this year is and making sure that the girls who haven't been there and um, don't know about it yet, like letting them know about our experiences and um, giving them that knowledge to help them when we do get there. So now both of you, uh, you know, have a teammate that graduated that you both knew very well. Let me start with you, G. Obviously you mentioned earlier, Leah White. Uh, she's now a grad coach, so she's hanging out with you now in the bullpen, but in a different capacity. What was that like, and what did you learn from playing with her for the last couple of years? Um, I mean, Aliyah's awesome, and I think it's awesome to be able to have her for my last year, too. You know, um, I looked up to her a lot last year and the year before that coming in. Um, and, you know, I've had my moments of, like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this is my last year. And, like, she's been there for me and, like, letting me know, like, you know, you're not alone. Like, I've been in those same situations and I understand where you're coming from um so just having her as like someone that I can lean on if I um ever need it like is awesome to have and knowing that she's um been through similar experiences as me and um maybe even tougher times than I have it's awesome to be able to just look over and she's right there of course you Denali you've played you had a center fielder named Kira Klarkowski you've played with for a long time going back to high school travel ball even younger than that. What's that been like? Uh, what impact did she have on your playing uh, style and uh, obviously uh, playing with her throughout her uh, most of her UCF career? 
Yeah, it's been um, it's been an adjustment um, just not having somebody that you've been playing with for eight straight years. You know, you actually have to form relationships instead of it just have like having it there just naturally. Um, the way we kind of did things is similar to how I'm kind of trying to, um, you know, pass down through our outfield and all the new new generations and obviously working with coach Kaya, our new outfield coach. Um, but yeah, just having, you know, she set such a high standard and, and being able to replace that it's been, um, it's been pretty difficult, but I think we have, we have some pretty good contestants this year for that. So trying to figure out different relationships has, has different, definitely been different, but, um, yeah, I'll definitely miss her this year. <laughs> Well, tell me about the outfield there. Who is uh, some of the outfielders that's kind of stood out to you there? you got a good mixture of veterans back, but some new faces as well. Yeah, so we have um, Nini Rowe. Ro. Ro. <laughs> oh, we're going with the nicknames here. Okay, we're going yes. nicknames here. <laughs> yes, Janisha is her full name. But uh, from FGCU, we played her our first um, game last year. And I specifically remember her because she was the only – she just kept getting on base. And I was like – we have got to get this girl out. And then she was making good plays. And I was like, wow, like we could really, like we could use this girl. And then it just so happened that she came here. So having Nini, we have a new freshman, um, Avery. She's also right field. So having her there, is, it's been really cool. Just being able to pass along information and everything like that. And then also we have our existing staff um, and a couple of girls that have been utility players in the past are coming back to the outfield and and dominating honestly so uh we've got a pretty stacked outfield for sure <laughs> yeah i can sense that uh gee obviously you're the kind of the veteran the leader of the pitching staff but you have a fellow senior that came over from ecu in uh, cam woodall what have you seen from her up close uh, she's a competitor and she is fierce. Um, when Coach Bear, you know, mentioned that um, we were talking to her about coming over, I was like, okay. I was like, she, you know, gave us a lot of trouble, like in season and um, even in the tournament. Like, she's 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 very very competitive, and I love that about her. And um, she's gonna help us so much, including like um, our freshman Caitlin and Grace and Ange um, returning. Um, I think our staff is very diverse, like in the way that we throw, um, not any of us are really the same. Um, and I think that's awesome to throw a lot of teams off and, you know, they don't really know what they're going to get from us. Um, but I'm excited to see what we can all do together. So you mentioned the youngsters, you got the freshman Caitlin Felton and then the returners, uh, Grace Jewell and, uh, Angelina, Angelina DeVoe first start with Caitlin. Uh, what have you seen from the freshman there and what kind of advice do you give her as somebody who's now going to enter D1 there as one of the vets? Yeah, um, you know, I think the best advice that I probably try to give her is kind of just to slow down the game. It can speed up really fast on you as a freshman and I know it did um, when I was a freshman and I would get in my head and just be like, I don't know if I could do this. Like it's, it's a different type of um, game when you get here, especially like against our schedule that we're playing this year. Um, so just making sure that she understands that we we do need her and she is like very impactful to our team at any given point. Um, and just making sure that her, Grace and Ange both all know that um, we're going to need them at some point and they're going to have to come in and get it done. Um, but that, you know, slow the game down because it can speed up. But, you know, we're the one with the ball in our hand every single pitch. So um, making sure that we can show everyone on the team like, you know, we can stay calm and poised in a lot of these situations and be okay. How important is it, Denali? Like kind of what G's talking about with the pitching staff, with the team in general. You're two of the veterans here, but there's a lot of young, new faces, young faces. So do you do you both feel you have to be more outspoken, more tight leadership than maybe you've had to be in the past because you're two that kind of seen it all? So I think that we do a really good job here and just on this team since we've been here is kind of spreading out. Um, the responsibilities for, you know, passing down our culture and how we how we do things here. Um, I think that like we have G, you know, she's got the pitchers and and everything. And then I have like outfield. we got, you know, leadership roles in the infield. So I think we do a really good job at spreading out and finding somebody for each of, you know, the new the newcomers so that they can learn from somebody specific in their role um, and just kind of fit in super easy so that when season comes, 
they're not a newcomer anymore. Tell me about the offense, Denali. How what, what can we expect from this offense? What kind of stands out to you so from this year's offense? Yeah, so um, you can definitely expect a fast offense. Um, we kind of are priding ourselves on, you know, being aggressive with bases and um, just, you know, base hits, um, hitting for our situations. Just, uh, I think we're going to be more like strat strategic with the way that we hit. Um, we're going over a lot of like, you know, staying disciplined, having a specific approach um, before you even go up to bat. Um, and so I think that, you know, just staying disciplined and then also just our, our new speed. <laughs> well, I want to ask you both about Jada Cody in particular, starting with you, G, because she catches you from time to time. Uh, and you've had great chemistry when she's caught you. Uh, she plays third base when she's not catching you. But, of course, she got the uh, invite tryout to recently to uh, Team USA. What, what, what makes her so special and unique there that obviously to the point where Team USA said, hey, let's give her an invite here, see what you got. What, what makes her unique there? Uh, starting with you, G. Um, you know, I think it's just like her demeanor almost and just the way that she carries herself. Um, and I, I like that behind the plate. And, you know, I know that she's um, been able to feed that into Ash, our freshman catcher. Um, and I could see that more in her coming out, you know, being able to be more vocal and just not afraid of anything. And um, so that's what I think is unique about Jada is, you know, she's going to go after whatever is asked of her and she's going to go all out for it. And of course, Denali, a big weapon in that lineup. I mean, I'll certainly remember the walk-off homer against Houston last year, the clutch, uh, tri you know, double against Florida to tie the game up. What does she bring from the offensive standpoint? Oh, I mean, she's everyone knows she's a huge part of our offense. I mean, the we 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 scream each other, each other all the time, and when she comes up, we know like regardless of the situation that we have to play, ready for her to to smack one against the fence. I mean, outfield is ready for that all time. So having her there and in the heart of our lineup, um, I think is gonna be a huge deal, especially, you know, she is also a fast runner. So like having that also, like we have to play her, you know, we can't just play back because if she does hit it in front of us, she's probably gonna get a double. So having, she's just so um, like agile and has different strengths. So it's really hard for me to defend um in that aspect right, Adam, I'm ready. talk about the uh certainly the defensive side of the ball denali obviously defense big pride outfield you know Kira's great throwing base runners out you're good at base running out tell us about the defense how that's coming along oh it's coming along pretty well we have a lot of returners um in that aspect and then some of the the newcomers um the our freshmen and the whole freshman and class in general has just come in with like a a compete mindset and we're doing a pretty good job at you know figuring out all the the little things that we can right now so that when it comes into the game it's just natural and it's easy and and we're just playing for fun but yeah i'd say we're, we're really gonna be priding ourselves on a, having a lockdown defense this year for sure g a player you know well justine molina kind of i call her like the vacuum cleaner there at second base talk about her leading that infield defensively no yeah i think she's stepped into her like leadership role as um, for the infield. Um, she's someone that a lot of them look up to. And even I look up to taking grounders off the mound. Like, I'm like, oh, I gotta look like Jay in this play. <laughs> um, but she's been able to really, you know, express like her knowledge and like what she's been through and just kind of like how she plays, which is like, I know she doesn't get too like mental and she can just like go out there and you know play free and like you could see that too and like she's someone obviously that i've um had for four years now so i mean that left side of me i i trust like any ball going over there i'm like she's gonna get it so let me ask you both starting with you g how are you a better player now than when you first uh, arrived here at ucf how are you better now or different um I think having Coach Bear obviously in the bullpen has, you know, helped me in ways that I just didn't even know. Um, coming into UCF, I knew that um, I needed her, like, and that was what I was missing, obviously, when she left Boise State. Um, and being able to become a leader and be behind, like, Kira and Aaliyah um, and all the ones that, and Aubrey that were here. Um, seeing them and the way that they led the team and, you know, that the way that they've 
um, gave back to this program, like has really inspired me to like, I'm playing for more than just me, obviously this last year, um, obviously for them and like future generations and um, the girls that are committed here, um, my family. So um, just kind of having in the back of my mind that I'm not playing for me, like I'm playing for um, something bigger. And you've known Coach Bear since uh, what, eighth grade, right? Since recruiting. What What is it about that? But you mentioned that because, you know, she's now in the bullpen more t- with you and all that. What What impact has she had on you, obviously, to the point, a big impact, obviously, in your life? Yeah. Um, I She's literally my mom it always <laughs> says, she's like, oh, just go talk to your second mom. She'll know what to say. <laughs> like, um, literally, like, she just is, she, we're a lot alike, like, when she used to play. Um, we're both like perfectionists and she understands a lot of the things that I, that I go through or like, she's like, whenever I'm thinking this, I think you're thinking it too. And I'm like, I probably am. Um, so she just relates to me in a, a different way to like off the field um, as a pitcher. Um, but being able to have her in the bullpen has been huge. And I've, I've just become a different type of pitcher than I was obviously my freshman year and even last year. So I'm really confident in my preparation that I've had with her um, as well as everyone else on the staff. So Denali, what about you? How are you different now today than you were say, you know, your freshman year when you walked in at UCF where you were, you've been a starter really since day one, since you've arrived uh, through the different two different staffs. What has it been? uh, How do you feel you're different now than back then? I think it's funny that you're asking this right now because I was just thinking about this um, at one of our camps a couple weeks ago. Um, and I think that it'd be the way I've gotten better is just like um, understanding the little things. Um, and that's come with, you know, Coach Bear emphasizing it for sure, um, fo- having actually having a focus on defense. Um, and then, you know, she always says like giving back to the game um, and it'll pay you back. And so with all of the camps that we've done, um, I just, I've found myself in the, when I'm teaching or trying to help coach somebody in my position, I start understanding the game better than I thought I had and paying attention to the the little things I can do each play, even if I'm not in it. Um, So just, yeah, I'd say the little things like focusing on that is, I've definitely got better. And I, I didn't even think, you know, you come in here, you think, oh, I've been playing this game for 10 years I know everything and then five years later you realize you didn't know anything so, <laughs> so I think I think yeah that's pretty fun you too I, I've noticed you're not ones that are aware of like what your you know your numbers or stuff like that like gee I remember you threw the no hitter in Memphis I don't think you were you were like one of the last people to know I think Do <laughs> you remember that no hitter there yeah <laughs> yeah I think a lot of us are like that you know we've we actually just talked about it today, you know, having confidence and being arrogant almost. And I think that's a big thing for this team, especially with our schedule, is just going in with as much confidence as we can and, you know, not getting too big headed or, you know, not thinking that, you know, or feeling like we aren't good enough, um, but just staying the same and being confident in ourselves and the preparation that we've put in this entire off season and this whole January, like we're ready. And I think that, we have to just pride ourselves on, you know, being confident in any situation that is thrown our way. Tell me both of you how you grew up in softball. What got you into playing softball? Starting with you, Denali. Um, so I definitely tried a bunch of sports when I was younger. Um, uh, my sister actually was playing softball and I was definitely that younger sister. That's whatever my sister's doing, I want to do. Um, And then, you know, when I actually got into the game, we would start having little competitions like in our backyard and everything. And of course me being way smaller. And of course I was the tiniest girl in the world when I was like eight years old, but um, I'd always want to win and I would always lose. And it always just, I just wanted to get better and better. So I think that's kind of how I got into it. What about you, G? I guess, yeah, I guess for me, I obviously played a lot of different sports and stuff. Um, My parents, you know, my dad played baseball at Long Beach. My mom played softball. Um, My family grew up around the game a little bit. Um, I actually was never like really good at it. Like (laughs) up until I think middle school, I was like, okay, I I think I could play a little bit. Um, I just never knew, you know, like what it was really about. And I never like took it very seriously up until about like getting into high school. 
but yeah mine was kind of just like off a whim let's go play softball and then you know ended up finding out okay like this is what i want to do <laughs> off a whim wow that's pretty good it's worked out well for you there it's kind of worked out yeah, it <laughs> what what do you two want to do after softball do you know yet i do um, you do okay i uh yeah um i mean it'll depend you know i would love to you know i think play pro for a year um if that opportunity comes my way um after that hopefully you know be able to work in um the mlb and do something within scouting or uh, player development in that type of area. Um, I've made a lot of connections, especially through UCF um, and through my brother. Um, he's played a lot of baseball, travel baseball. So getting to um, meet people that he's been around that have been in the majors um, has helped me like make those connections and get me ready for real life. <laughs> That's, <really> cool. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, I was pretty impressed. I might want to meet him to make connections there. Uh, Denali, what about you? <laughs> Um, so I actually graduated in 2020 um, with my bachelor's in athletic training, and I've been working um, with the athletic staff. The, the athletic trainers here have been so helpful to me um, and just letting me kind of help out and still like keep those skills up. So I've been actually waiting for a year and a half. And so now after softball's done, and that's very upsetting, I'm actually going to have to do my job. So uh, athletic training, um, hopefully collegiate setting. It'd be my, it might be interesting. Maybe I'll play a team. Maybe I'll be on a team that, you know, Coach Bear ends up playing. So it might come full circle. <laughs> wow. Could be wild there. But you both have still a lot of softball to go there. Uh, and that'll be my last question. What's going to be the keys for this team to accomplish your eternal goals uh, this year, starting with you, G? Um, I think, like I said earlier, you know, just having confidence. This is a, a really big schedule. You know, it's the biggest I've had in my career um, with a lot of these teams. Um, but I think, you know, just having confidence in our preparation and what we've done this entire off season and, you know, trusting the process that we've been through. Um, and, you know, we're gonna go through failure. We're gonna go through hard times and making sure that we just stick together through, um, through those tough times and having each other's backs and protecting our inner circle the entire time. Like it's gonna get us through. What about you, Denali? Yeah, I would just say exactly what G said and just um, staying focused throughout. We all have one goal. I mean, we talk about it all the time. We talk about our individual goals and, um, you know, all the little things that might build up throughout season. They're all leading still towards that one goal. So sticking together and just staying focused, um, I think it's going to be our thing this year. We got two players right here. There's in the top 10 in numerous categories, especially uh, you, Denali, in the offensive categories. You're all over the record books there. You're you're sneaking up there too, G. I'm not going to tell you because you both are not, you're, you're not as interested on that. But uh, thank you both so much. Uh, Gianna Mancha, Denali Schapacher joining us here. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to talk to us. Uh, good luck this year and uh, looking forward to seeing you both on the field once again. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, Eric.